Thank you so much. All right. So overall, this is, if you go to the next slide, this is, the, you know, the presentation uh, outline, which will cover uh, basically five key sections, uh, including the introduction, sea level change studies, GIS techniques, uh, new methods for modeling, and you know, uh, we can conclude and summarize uh, our insights in the last sections. Uh, can you move to the next slide, please? Um, next slide. Okay, so climate change basically present a critical global challenge and impacting temperatures, as we said, hydrography, energy changes, oceans, biodiversity, and so on. But why sea level rising? So on a global scale, sea level rising because of our warming environment. And there is two key factor that I would say causes sea level changes. And the first one is what we call thermal expansion. So more heat get to traps by the atmosphere and this heat get observed by the ocean and the water then get warms and it actually expands. And that causes sea levels to go up. While the other reason is because of melting ice. So as the earth get war warmer, the ice sheet, you know, also get warmer. And when the ice melt, the melted water goes into the ocean, which cause sea level to go up. And if you look at the figure, you know, to your uh, left side, if you see you know, uh, the July, it showcases July surface air temperature globally ranges from 1940 to 2023. And if you look at the shade, the blue shade, you know, colors which represent a cooler than average years, while the red shades, you know, signifies a much more warmer than average years, which have been lately. All right. And if you look at the figure into the right side, which basic, basically showcase the daily global sea surface temperatures, you know, were average from July 1979 to July 2023. And this expand across 60 south to degrees to 60 degrees north domain. And as you notice, you know, from 2023 and 2016, which is highlighted with thick line in a bright red and a dark red respectively. So the temperature as evidence is increasing, you know, uh, lately in a way very noticeable. Go to the next slide, Justine. So sea level rise, it's a significant consequences of a climate change. And since, you know, 1880, the global mean sea level have increased by, you know, eight to nine inches, which is about 21 to 24 centimeter, reaching a record high in 2021. And according to NAWA, Coastal sea levels are projected to rise by an additional even 10 to 12 inches by 2050 with the regional, of course, variation. And this, you know, concerning trend highlight the importance of studying, you know, further the sea level change and its potential impact on coastal communities and ecosystem. Can you go to the next slide, uh, Justine, and the following one? So we have examined several literatures, you know, and so sea level change studies, you know, have basically examined different scenarios. And this is including from, you know, intergovernmental panel on climate change with representative concentration pathways, or even locally crafted scenarios tailored to you know, a specific context. 
And these studies primarily rely on the Therion measurements and commonly used modeling techniques to project sea level change impact. So studies on sea level change um, overall are conducted across different scales, uh, you know, encompassing a global scale or even regional scales per countries or even local perspective per cities or coast and port and so on. Can you move on uh, just seeing to the GIS technique slides? Excellent. And we were also looking for um, to see what are the literature have written and what are the latest uh, have been applied for sea level change across you know uh, publications, and uh, we could summarize it uh, you know such GIS uh, you know application and techniques for sea level rise you know which encompass you know different methods as you see in this you know slide. Um, so GIS techniques can include different methods for studying sea level change. And this is started with hydrological connectivities, which is commonly utilized and employed the spatial phase and networks, or even the bathtub method, which sometimes they're known by the fill and spill method, or eight-way connectivities and algorithm, often also using ArcGIS softwares, Additionally, techniques like DSAS, Digital Shoreline Analysis System in ArcMap, and classification algorithm along with the indices such as the CVI, which is Coastal Vulnerability Index, are also employed for you know, sea level analysis. And to conduct this modeling, GIS techniques may utilize data from various sources. And this is, could include Landsat, Sentinel, and LADAR, uh, SRTM, and analyze sea level change and its impact. And for example, instead of relying only on the Terion measurement for a specific context, so satellite imagery, you know, what well, this is one of the advantage of it is can be utilized to provide more comprehensive global and remote sensing approach. So offering uh, a much valuable insights into studying sea level rise. Uh, can you move to the next slide, Justine? So based on uh, our analysis, you know, of 200 articles, you know, the spatial distribution of sea level change journal articles which published between 1992 and 2023 by country reveal a, a notable trend as you see in this map. So among 48 countries examined, the United States we found and China emerged as a leader with 42 and 26 articles respectively. So the global concern of sea level rise is evidence, as you see, in the coastal regions, uh, leading to an increase of flooding and erosion incidents. So for example, states like Florida and Louisiana in the United States experience these impacts, given their location you know, in the ocean, close to the ocean. So while cities like Shanghai, for example, in China are also, also vulnerable to uh, rising sea level. And now, uh, if, uh, Ms. Justine, if you flip to the next slide. So Ms. Justine uh, uh, will proceed with the remaining sections, including you know, the explorations of the new method. Go ahead, Ms. Justine. Thank you. Uh, so good morning, everyone. And uh, thank you for uh, having invited us for today's webinar. So I'm going to follow uh, to continue then this presentation with the new methods uh, which uh, appeared uh, pretty recently and which allow now to um, which are actually used now to in, in parallel with GIS methods or others. So these new methods are based on game engines. Um, game engines are softwares uh, which allow to uh, 
um, create games. That's uh, what we're mainly used to right now. Um, really famous ones, maybe you know some of, some of them, and they are developed with um, so these softwares, which are, for example, Unreal Engine, Unity, Godot, Game Maker Studio, or even CryEngine. And today, uh, what we can see is that these game engines are uh, used to study sea level change, even if their original purpose was to design 3D video games. And some others, uh, some other uh, tools or softwares can be used uh, in parallel or alone uh, of this game engine, such as, for example, uh, Blender, which is a com computer gra uh, graphics software tool, uh, which is uh, very impressive for its for its 3D design capabilities and is used for um, for uh, digital drawing and even animations. And uh, so they come all together as um tools softwares to improve uh, the sea level change research uh, that we have uh, that we have right now to illustrate this uh, here you have a um, uh, screenshot of a result from a paper uh, from from Mercantini and Charpentier uh, which uh, modeled the inundation the flooding of a museum and i'm going to show you through the following slides, uh, some examples of application in the research, uh, late, late research, uh, which show the application of game engines. And we are especially going to focus on Unity uh, for, the, um, uh, for the use of uh, game engine in research. Um, and what we're going to see is that Unity is actually uh, the one, the game engine, which is the mostly used actually in the literature. And we begin uh, with uh, the study from Mercantini and Charpentier, uh, which had been conducted in 2019, uh, which is, uh, so there are uh, two French uh, researchers and they, um, they uh, published a paper named uh, Musée Résilient aux Inondations, uh, Modélisation d'un musée type et Simulation d'un scénario d'inondation en réalité virtuelle, which I translated here for you as Museums Resilient to Flooding, Modeling of a Model Museum and Simulation of Flooding Scenario in Virtual Reality. And their objective uh, here was to uh, assess the exposition and vulner vulnerability of a model museum, so a museum which doesn't exist but which could, which resembles to museum that that exists, um, to uh, uh, to assess the then the vulnerability to flood risk, and they did this using Unity. Uh, using uh, some data provided by Unity library and plugins, because for this museum, they didn't have to rely only on a museum already existing. They could just create their own museums with the features they wanted uh, to see uh, how flooding could impact such a building in reality. And their findings uh, show that uh, they actually managed to create a 3D visualization of a museum uh, with, uh, in the end, seven scenar scenarios uh, which were found based on the flood event created. And on your right, what you can see is a visualization of the museum before the flooding and after the flooding. They even implemented uh, the possibility for the objects um, to float uh, on water to see uh, what, uh, how it would even impact uh, the art pieces inside the museum. Another uh, study here more focuses on uh, the creation of digital twin cities and uh, autonomous driving research, but still is using um, uh, game engines uh, with GIS. It is a study made by Xu and Al in uh, 2023. Um, and here their, their aim was to address the gap of the scarcity of digital twins related to transportation 3D um using unity so what they did is um they wanted to recreate the a city uh in unity to um implement automatic driving and uh for this they used uh so several data like land use elevation so digital elevation model uh, building and infrastructure footprint uh prefab 3D buildings, trees, or even infrastructures to create the most um, real uh, simulation. And they managed to do it uh, using GIS. 
So then, uh, to support uh, this autonomous vehicle research, and what they found in the end is that it is a very cost-effective solution because Unity uh, is a free software. It doesn't require uh, a subscription or anything, uh, and it is pretty um, uh, pretty easy to use, even if we don't have a strong uh, programming background. And so on the right, you have a visualization of what they managed to do, uh, which we can see is uh, very, very close from, uh, from reality. Uh, and they even, uh, I'm sorry, they even implemented different types of weather conditions. So you could uh, drive under rain or under snow, for example. Um, as uh, now we can see another example uh, that is developed uh, for a city again. Uh, by Lee uh, et Al in 2020, uh, where they built a planetary scale geos form using Unity 3D. Uh, so here it's very interesting because they managed to use Unity to create an entire environment on the entire Earth planet using uh, real based uh, real images uh, from Earth. Uh, so they did this using aerial imagery, uh, 3D buildings and structures. And they managed to create a platform um, which offers uh, great geospatial data visualization, analysis, and which could potentially revolutionize the way large-scale geospatial data sets are accessed, analyzed, and understood. Because this way, um, we have in one place uh, the possibility to uh, access to data all over, all over the world, kind of like uh, Google Earth is doing, uh, with the possibility to implement an entirely 3D scene, uh, like you can see on the right with the D, um, uh, with uh, the last uh, visualization that you have completely on your uh, at the bottom right, uh, which shows actually the steps uh, from uh, the aerial image, uh, which they take uh, as a basis. Then they create a mesh, they apply it uh, to uh, the building, and they create uh, a 3D building model to finally render it uh, in, the, um, in, the Unity, uh, in the Unity environment, in the Unity scene. So uh, this, these were all examples of applications to cities, transportation. And now we're going to see a last example, uh, another example, sorry, um, but this time, which is applied to environment and especially here a park in Malaysia. Um, which has been published in 2021 by Shahaban et Al, uh, which uh, they wanted to develop an interactive 3D mapping for a park management system uh, using Unity again. Uh, they managed to do it from internet, books, articles, interview, observation, and questionnaires. So they all, um, all the data they actually get is not... Uh, it's not mandatory to get paid data. Most of the data we can get in these types of applications are actually available online. So this is what they, they did here. And they developed then a 3D GIS uh, park mapping with an interactive mapping, which has an interactive database uh, where we can actually update the data and avoid in the end uh, data redundancy uh, when we want to update this data. So what we can see is on the right, uh, they actually managed to create a very um, uh, realistic uh, visualization of a park uh, with a forest under around the park. Um, so this is for a, a study regarding mostly environments. And we're going to switch to a final, uh, final study this time, uh, which is this time more based on transportation. Uh, they actually here, uh, Shin et Al in 2015 published a paper uh, which is related to uh, navigation simulation using again uh, Unity. Uh, so what they did here, they wanted to create a 3D terrain visualization system of a navigation simulation using uh, elevation, bathymetric data, and uh, add to navigation. Um, so what they uh, create is what you can see on the right. Uh, we have a realistic terrain visualization system uh, for computer and simulators uh, where they integrated, created, entirely created 3D objects. Um, and uh, they visualized a city, but they created entirely the city. Uh, 
They didn't rely on uh, already existing objects, but they created them automatically, as you can see in the figure 13, uh, which shows, uh, for example, here buildings, which have been automatically created, but they don't um they are not the same as the buildings in reality it is automatic creation based on a sample of buildings and they actually automatically uh, create the buildings based on the places where the buildings should be but they are not original they are all the same it's just to give um uh, a sample of what could be the city but it's not the real city and based on that because the most the main important focus of this uh, study was to um, rely on navigation simulation they because the city was just then a sample a created city they have then implemented the navigation system inside it so all these studies uh, that i mentioned all use uh, unity it is actually uh, from uh, from what i saw the game engine which is mostly used uh, when it refers to js studies and also c level uh, c level change studies uh, and you could see it uh, uh, see a glimpse of it with a study of Mercantini and Charpentier. Uh, and uh, based on this, uh, I decided to work uh, on a study, uh, which is what I'm working on right now, um, to, uh, to analyze, assess the impact of sea level rise scenarios on Abu Dhabi. And I'm focusing on infrastructures, environment, and mobility. So the papers that I mentioned before were kind of... Um, uh, inspiration and also I found some methodology, uh, information, data sets which could be used uh, in this way. So for the moment, uh, so the study area is, is located for, uh, so then in Abu Dhabi and uh, I implemented already elevation data, um, Google satellite image to get uh, the real colors uh, of the buildings, environment and where the water is located and uh, OpenStreetMap data to get the buildings and the roads and will be in implemented in the future, but not for the moment, uh, population, bathymetry, uh, environment, and land use land cover. So what we're going to see is uh, a prototype of uh, what I managed to develop for the moment. Uh, but before this, I'm just going to address the gaps uh, which uh, we can find in the literature and what... Uh, so what gaps my, my research uh, should solve uh, in the end. So I just put here some examples of, um, so as you can see, there is the game engine Unity and Unreal Engine, uh, which are maybe the two most commonly used in the literature, even if Unity actually is mostly like more used than Unreal Engine uh, in the literature. And we can see the different advantages and limits of um, of these two uh, game engines, uh, saying that Unity is actually easier to use in comparison to uh, Unreal Engine, uh, because, for example, Unity is based on C Sharp, but uh, programming language, when Unreal Engine is based on C++, so C Sharp is uh, more accessible technically than C++, and Unreal Engine requires a higher computer capacities than Unity. But in the end, Unity has very powerful visualization uh, possibilities. So in comparison to Unreal Engine, Unity actually uh, has very good uh, uh, visualization in the end, even compared to Unreal Engine. Uh, so regarding to the gaps uh, which, are, uh, which are usually found in the literature that I'm planning to, um, to solve are, for example, that it is a, technically, a technique which is for the moment pretty rarely, rarely used, even if now in the literature we can find more of them. Uh, the solution the solution of using a game engine allows to move freely in the area like in a 3d simulation like we would do it for example in a game uh, like it is commonly known now uh, so there is this, uh, this main advantage uh, related to 2d experience which doesn't allow to move in a city like like if we were walking into it uh, there is also the possibility to, to access to a computer-based experience uh, the fact that we rely on reality instead of simulation, because most of the time, as we saw it in the literature, um, the, the simulations are based on created cities and not exactly on the reality. So you must have, you might have already heard about the concept of digital twin, and it's towards that uh, that we go here. Um, there are also uh, extraction of statistics, which is 
uh, not really implemented right now in uh, in the literature. I have not seen or very few uh, papers which mention uh, direct extraction of statistics from real live um, 3D uh, simula simulations. So that's also what I'm going to address. Uh, the fact to combine different fields at the same time in, uh, for example, transportation, environment, in what place is not something that we often see either, uh, as you saw in the literature that I mentioned, uh, it is either focused on transportation, either transport on environment, but we rarely have a combination of these fields. And finally, uh, an interface will also be developed, even if for the moment it's not the case in the prototype, but an interface is also planned uh, for the prototype, uh, for the final um, prototype. So just to give you a glimpse of the methodology I used uh, for this prototype, there is first a part of pre-processing, uh, which allows me to get uh, the data ready for the visualization development in Unity. Uh, so I have uh, OpenStreetMap, which allows me to get the buildings and the roads uh, as a basis, or even in 3D. There is also the elevation for shuttle radar topography mission, that I got, which is the data at 30 meters of spatial resolution, which I'm using for the moment, waiting to actually get uh, higher resolution data. Uh, there is also Google Satellite Image, uh, which I used for the prototype, uh, but now I have higher uh, image uh, resolution, so I will be using this in the future. Uh, this Google Satellite Image allows to have, uh, so as I mentioned before, the uh, reality of the terrain um, mapped on the elevation, which actually appears in gray in Unity. Uh, and finally, uh, so this, uh, st these layers have been uh, pre-processed in the GIS software uh, QGIS. And in parallel, I also created a water mask uh, using GIMP, which is an image manipulation program. And this water mask will allow to um, tell the, uh, a plugin in Unity where to apply the water areas uh, for the flooding scenarios. So after having pre-processed then all this data, I can move to Unity, uh, where several plugins uh, are, uh, I, uh, are implemented. Um, so I implemented them, and then we can actually play the scene. And uh, in, the, in the simulation, we can add water uh, to recreate flooding scenarios. Uh, so here uh, are the initial visual, res uh, visual results of the prototype and um, some accuracy assessments. Uh, regarding the, the visual results, uh, you can see that we have, uh, so on the left, uh, a visualization of uh, so, uh, the location that I, uh, that I showed in the study area at the beginning for Abu Dhabi, uh, where we can see uh, part of um, of uh, the area related to the Great Mosque and uh, al Khan area, if you know about it. And um, in this visualization, you can see, and I'm going to expand further after, but uh, we can already see that 3D buildings have been implemented, uh, roads also, which have been uh, mapped on top of uh, real roads existing, which you can see um, actually under, uh, because it's the Google Maps, uh, Google satellite images. Um, and we are going to now move to accuracy assessments before uh, switching to the prototype. Um, so for the accuracy assessment here, uh, we have uh, water areas uh, which have been uh, assessed because um, they present not a 100% accuracy. Uh, for the buildings and the roads, what you can see is that we have an accuracy of 100% because the ground truth image is the Google satellite and the OSM, OpenStreetMap data, are actually extracted from Google satellite uh, data. So the reason why we have an accuracy of 100% of buildings and roads is because of this. Uh, related to uh, now for water, uh, water doesn't have this um, high accuracy. It reaches a good accuracy of 78.43%, uh, but it's not uh, very good. The reason is the shuttle radar topography mission data are, out are outdated. They are not recent, uh, which explains uh, why the digital elevation model 
Uh, and the Alcana area, if you know about it, which is in the, located in the uh, bottom right uh, of the image, uh, is not uh, showing water uh, like um, water on it. It's what you can see actually on the upper image at the top left um, that you can see of a, a screenshot of a prototype where you can see an area which is actually in dark green, which doesn't show uh, water on it. And it's because uh, the SRTM which has been used didn't at that, like the Alcan area didn't exist at that time. It has been created after. So that's why for uh, I have this, uh, like the, the water couldn't be added on it. And a solution to this is actually pretty easy. To would use a recent digital elevation model or a LiDAR with a high spatial resolution so that we have a higher accuracy for the location of water in this area. Um, so now let's see what it gives in reality. Uh, here you have a visualization then with a video of a prototype for uh, the Abu Dhabi scene that you just saw. Uh, by clicking on the water drop that you have at the top of the screen, uh, we can add uh, water, uh, one meter of, uh, of level of water each time. Uh, here is the Alcana area that you can see, which is uh, not showing water on it because of outdated, outdated uh, shuttle radar topography mission data. But overall, the 3D representation uh, shows uh, 3D buildings and roads which are positioned uh, at the right place, as you can see. And uh, what you can also notice is that uh, the elevation, you can see that there are some kinds of hills or bumps on it, which are actually uh, look, um, related to the special resolution of the data which are used, which are of 30 meters. Uh, so it actually explains uh, why we have uh, this kind of hills uh, that are shown. It's actually what you can see here on the area of Albatin Airport, uh, which is just the, the big airport uh, road you can see right here. And the reason why we have this bench is because I don't have implemented for the moment uh, a one meter special resolution data, which I'm planning to, to, to acquire for this, day, for this uh, study. And it will actually resolve this issue. Here, what you can see is that the water has, is added uh, more and more, and the water is actually beginning to uh, flood the road uh, that you have um, next to the water area. And we're going uh, in the end here to make a close-up uh, to see um, more closely how the roads are uh, so mapped on this uh, on this elevation and simulation, you can see the 3D buildings more closely and the water, which is already beginning to flood the roads, uh, which will in, be, uh, in the future be um, give uh, the possibility to, to get direct extraction of statistics and uh, plan uh, roads which cannot be accessed anymore, um, finding different, uh, different roads to access the area we want to go uh, and it will also feature um, an, inter uh, an interface uh, which will be interactive uh, with the 3D visualization in real time. So as a conclusion, uh, what we saw is that uh, Unity uh, is um, a game engine uh, which allows uh, to study so sea level change uh, through different ways. Uh, it can be uh, applied to transportation, environments, uh, or even the cities themselves. Uh, as uh, Dr. Haula Al-Kabi said it, climate change has multiple impacts, so including sea level change, and several methods exist to work on its impacts. Uh, so as she mentioned, with JS techniques or other techniques um, using algorithms, models, etc., or lately, um, game engines like Unity or Unreal Engine, which present uh, very innovative solutions and are pretty promising regarding realistic solutions to um, study sea level rise. And here it's what I, I am currently working on through this prototype, uh, which is showcasing Abu Dhabi's response to sea level changes. And as a final uh, say, I would end on this uh, quote of the United Nations Secretary General, uh, which said in 2023 that the era of global warming has ended and the era of, the era of global boiling has arrived, which basically shows the importance uh, that climate change has in, uh, uh, in current research and why we have so much research which is focused on this uh, subject. And 
Um, so here are the references that were used uh, in this uh, slide, uh, in the slides, if you want, uh, if you want to look at them. And I would like to thank you uh, all for uh, having attended this session. So thank you a lot.